Support for Back to One from Committed Impulse, a high-performance training program for actors and entrepreneurs, taught by Josh Pice. Discounts for Back to One listeners are available for upcoming courses. Go to committedimpulse.com slash back to one and enter the code back to one. Genuinely, I am not giving a fuck about what if people like me or not. I am giving a massive fuck about if people feel like this is a real human being and it's relatable. Even if it's as cartoonish and outlandish and insane as Madison in Zombieland, I am thinking, how can they relate to this person? Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Zoe Deutsch is an actor. She sat down with me in New York City to talk about the work. I want to talk about something that you might not want to talk about. And if you don't want to talk about it, it's okay. I can adjust. Okay. Okay. And when you hear what it is, you'll be like, <laughs> you'll, I think you'll be like, oh, that? Then this flood of, yeah, I don't want to talk about that will come in. But you'll be relieved that it's what it is. Okay. But you still don't want to talk about it. Your binder. Oh. <laughs> See, didn't that happen? Exactly what I said would happen, happened. <laughs> Oh, thank God. Wait, oh, no, I don't want to talk about that. No, <laughs> it, no, I, you know, what's interesting. It's not that I don't want to talk about it. I'm just now wondering how can I talk about it? I don't know. Okay. Whoa. Every single project has a binder, right? Yeah. Does it start out where you know it's going to be a thick binder? If I mean, I'm the script every, is thick. If I'm in every scene, yeah. Okay. I, I just can't, I can't uh, uh, picture what is in this thing. That's why you Woody know what Harrelson I mean? looked at my Zombieland script and yeah. he was thought he was like the, the, it's hieroglyphic. Like what do you <laughs> you're what ha, what do you what could you he kept being like what could you possibly be writing in the margins? Like what could you possibly be writing? And he would try to steal my sides or my pages for the day. Yeah. Um let's approach this a different way. How does all of that help you in the moment? A lot. But okay, let's break it down. So yeah. I get a script, I read a script, and if I start to if I start to read the script, if I start to say the lines out loud, I think it's a, usually a clear indication that I, I want to, I really am connecting with the character. Mm -hmm. And I've never played a part, I've never been in a movie that I have an audition for, except for Buffalo, because I produced it. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, that means I'm like, okay, I got I want to, I want to go down this road and fight for this. So that's the first step. Then if I, you know, I'm auditioning, I'm doing whatever, if I get the part, I read the script over and over and over again. And then I, I um, have a teacher that I work with who um, is, has changed my life and um, we break down the script in a very, one, the way she put it, which was really helpful, she said, we take things from it being cerebral to tangible. Mm -hmm. Instead of it being like, what is her motive? We really break it down to like line by line mm -hmm. by line. What is happening and why is it happening? Mm -hmm. What is the super objective? What are the little objectives in each tiny little thing they're saying? So all those little notes, every single thing has a, a next to it, like, you know, yeah. what I'm trying to say and what we're talking about and the discussions we're having. And of course, when you're you're doing this kind of work and this this this, this process of discovery with another person, um, like my teacher, you come across potential problems, story problems, character problems, things that don't add up, things that mm. are uh, contradictory. And then, and then you have a whole set of other notes that end up being in the back of the scripts. And then yeah, mm -hmm. now you now that's, now we're starting to build the, the bizarre insanity that is the, the, um, the book. Yeah. Yeah. Then I have a teacher um, who's a, an Alexander Technique teacher. So he does a lot of symbol work and a lot of color work and a lot of animal work. And I always like to choose two different animals for for um, a part, for a character. I like to create um, kind of like character boards. Yeah. And then that's a whole other thing. Um, uh, and then... And then when you then you break it down again for, from 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 um, sometimes if it's like super complicated I'll do like I'll color code scenes for different characters so blue will be my scenes with my mom 
Green uh, will be scenes with my brother, uh, so that I can just immediately like if I'm doing a scene on page eighty with my brother, I can be like, what? It's all out of order, and I'm confused. And we were just, I'll go back and just look at my script, and I can just see his mm-hmm. color and go back and remember what's happened with us mm-hmm. in our journey in the movie mm-hmm. or where whatever it is, play or TV show. Um, and then when I'm shooting, most people have sides. They get sides every morning. I usually take out the pages of my binder. And I, because all my notes are there. Yeah. And so then I'm taking them to set and they get all crinkled and fucked up and gum gets in there and whatever else and more yeah. writing. And uh, I'm trying to remember the choreography after we rehearse, before we start shooting. So I write down the choreography in the pages. So then every page becomes like its mm-hmm. own weird thing. Anyway, that's, that's how it happens like that. <laughs> how does this not get overwhelming? All this information, though. That's what I want to know. Because I'm not thinking about any of the information. I'm, I'm, I know the words backwards and forwards. Sorry, I just drank kombucha. I forgot we were, that's a gross noise to listen to. I apologize. Um, that's the point of doing all that work. You don't think about any of it because you have that confidence to go into the, the deep unknown because you've explored all these different avenues. You're good. You're safe. Mm. You can, someone can take you any which way and you'll know which way to go, you know? Mm. Not everybody wants or needs that or likes that. Some people, some people are, I've worked with actors who are genuinely better when they don't know their lines, when they haven't prepared. Like, genuinely. I don't judge that at all. I think that's amazing. I'm, in a lot of ways, jealous. Yeah. I like to torture myself with preparation, even for, like, a goofy comedy. Yeah, that, well, that's that, that's what I wanted to ask next because I think a lot of people think when they when they when they are going into a comedy, they think, okay, this is about the jokes. This is not necessarily about. I mean, of course, it's about the character, but it's not necessarily about preparation and about because ultimately, if the jokes don't work, if the comedy doesn't work, then there's a problem. So, I, and I feel like, and I don't know if this is really true, but I feel like this is the problem with comedies a lot. It's approached backwards, kind of, mm-hmm. like about just the the making sure that technically, timing wise, the jokes land or something, instead of doing yeah. the work of the of the character and making it come out of reality. Mm. And that's why I think this was good, very good work that you did in this movie because it's the, you know all the comedy is coming out of this character. Of course, the situations are there and the script is great. But if you didn't do this work, I think, it wouldn't have been as funny. You know, it's funny in a deep way because you're doing the work. It's coming from the character. Yeah, things are funny when they're when they're real. Yeah, when you yes. believe them. Yes, but having said that, though, because this is a really... It's a physical comedy a lot of the time. Mm. You know, you're doing things with your, with your body that, that yeah. was there... On top of all the binder work, on top of all the work, was there an added extra pure kind of comedy thing about physicality and timing that you haven't necessarily dipped into before quite in quite this way? The frenetic sort of fast, you know, the, the element of her like always hurting herself and falling and all that just comes with it, her everything about her personality she's quick and she's not thinking she's going yeah. go 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 um but a lot of the physical stuff comes from the the animal work mm. the mm-hmm. um, and like the symbol shit and i don't know yeah. like it sounds so stupid but it, it, it it's um no there's a depth there so it's real. so yeah so you're saying like it, it sounds so pretentious when you talk it's why i think it's so it's you don't i mean of course that's what this is about what this podcast is about but most of the time it's very and why it's fun, I think, for actors to talk to you is because, one, because you, you're you fun to talk to. And two, because it sounds, I always am hesitant to talk about process because it sounds so pretentious. It sounds so yeah. stupid. Like, who gives, like, you don't want to hear that my aunt was in a bear. Like, who, it just sounds so, um, like it, you know, I don't know. I know what you mean. But, but it, it's not. It, it's fun and it's, and it's, 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 it's like. You get, but it's, if it it's cringy to me. To, I know, I know. But if it didn't <laughs> pay dividends, that would be one thing. You know, that would be like if it did. We didn't see it. If it didn't. If it didn't. If you didn't feel it in the performance that there is a depth, then you can. You know. Look, I played like three. I don't know if you did. You see the politician or Zombieland? Did yes. You see of them? Um, I played like the, in the last year, like with the politician. 
and Zombieland and Buffaloed. I played three extreme yeah, yeah. <laughs> heightened larger than life characters and I had so much fun but it was always with all three of them I mean so much of comedy is acting out of optimism you know I think that's at its root you're going like yes how can I you know like and what else? like you know the improv yes and um, and two of those three were super optimistic people and this one peg was not in in buffalo she's not and that was an interesting challenge mm-hmm. and probably why i brought more of the physical thing to it because it's not it's it, it, it you know again i i think so much of comedy is acting out of optimism like i said and um she's a pretty negative person mm-hmm. she's a pretty mm-hmm. dark person um greedy and and um high octane intense mm-hmm. person Mm-hmm. Um, so that was it was good because it was a shift all of them were so different and big and different amazing challenges so far away from me so 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 far away from me but it does make me as I'm th- thinking and reflecting makes me think I'm ready for some stillness mm-hmm. and do you have a binder right now do you have the next binder no I don't. There's oh, no. actually, I do. <laughs> I have one. Okay. I have one. I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it, but I showed up to the table read with all my notes and all my things. And there's a new draft of the script. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's I was going to ask before, but I thought it would be good. Oh, it's the worst. When, when, when you, you always get, get new drafts and new pages, the and then you have to transfer. Oh, yeah, okay. and you have to transfer yeah. all the notes. And because, <sighs> and because I get I get a little superstitious, I think, about it, where I like. I It's also, I like to see that there, that I've done work. Yeah. It reminds me, like, okay, you deserve to be here. You can be. There mm-hmm. is like a psycho, mm-hmm. to, like, mm-hmm. element to it. Mm-hmm. So I transfer the notes. I keep transferring them. Yeah. And someone was like, well, can't you get like an assistant? And I was like, no, no, I don't want. It's embarrassing. <laughs> People looking at your notes is the most humili- Like when an actor's like, oh shit, ugh, I don't have my script. Can I look at your pages? And I'm like, <gasps> <laughs> like, don't look at my embarrassing notes. I made a little uh, television pilot, independent television pilot many years ago that was in a festival and it played with one other television pilot. And so we got to know those people that made that. And, um, and the producer of that thing really liked my uh, pilot. Hmm. And so she saw it over and over and over again. And then at the end of it, she said, I think I want you to direct my uh, script that I've been laboring over for years and that I'm producing. She gave me it. I loved it. Loved the script. Was so excited about it. We had a conversation, and she's like, "What do you think?" I said, "I love this." And then I'm getting excited, and I said, "I can't wait to start finding Rachel or whatever the character's name was." She and she said, "Peter, what are you talking about? It's me. I'm playing Rachel." The blood rushed from my face, like. I could not believe that she didn't tell me that and that she wanted to be it and she was not at all what I saw in the character. Eventually, I, I, I said no. And the other reason Did I you didn't, tell her that it, that was why? No. But the other reason why was because she was the writer, actor, and producer. And I felt like I couldn't wrap my arms around how I would be able to fully function as a director in that. It's like, it's almost yeah, like... Yeah, you're wa- not the captain of the ship in that. You felt like you're like, if I'm a director, I need to... I understand that. Yeah. With Buffaloed, you didn't write the script, but you produced it and you acted in it, of course. And Tanya Wexler comes on board. Did you feel like you needed to do something to allow her to feel like she can be a fully mm-hmm. functioning as a director you know you didn't write the script of course it's not, it's not like no, it's not no, the no. same it's thing it's a good question i mean i think i think immediately i i had so much respect for her i really i i trusted her i um and i think immediately we we just we connected and there was no 
t tension, but there was no like passing of a baton because it's a collaborative art form, you know. But I also I do do very much so respect the like old school like you're the director, you have the final say thing. Like this yeah. is I, I am I am here to protect my character. Um, and as a producer, I'm here to say there's no task too big or too small, like here for you. But um, I'm the CEO of the character and you are the CEO of the movie. Ooh, that's you know, so yeah. like I don't um, but, you know, we something I like to do on movies like this that are s small. And if you have the opportunity and the director and the writer are down every Sunday, we would get together. I love doing this. I started doing it on um, Before I Fall with Ryder So Young. Uh, where every Sunday the writer, the director, and um, myself, we get together and go through the whole one-liner for the week mm. in order of how we're shooting it. Mm -hmm. So it starts to get into mm. our brain and we talk about every little thing, um, props and kind of how we're seeing the scene and how she's, ta how she's thinking about shooting it. She shows me her shot list. I tell her, okay, well, mm. this is what I need and this is what, okay, but don't you think, and then oh, this line doesn't make sense and the writer goes, okay, well, can we get some alts here? And then, you know, it's like a three-hour session on Sunday, but then by you've you've saved so much time so much money so much pain yeah. and also a, a, a trust and a symbiosis there's like a connection that builds when you do stuff like that um and i think that that our relationship really benefited from that yeah for sure you're letting her be the ceo of the project and you're able to also get what you need from her idea of i have this I, I'm the I'm the captain of the ship. Like you mm -hmm. need her to feel like the captain of the ship for her to get give you give what you, you need. A hundred, uh, absolutely. Yeah, that's a really, really, really smart point. It's true. Yeah, and I hope she felt that way, and I think she did. Tanya Wexler said, "There is a watchability about you, and you have to like you. Meaning the audience. <laughs> the audience has to like you. And." Um, I reflected upon that and I was like, yes. And then I was thinking, okay, are you constructing this? No, no, but I think that this is why I think, you know that thing where people say, this is a controversial stance I'm taking here. You know that thing that people say where they're like, oh, don't date actors or actresses. They'll, you know what I mean? What I think that means is when somebody and I'm not saying this about myself, I'm not tooting my own horn, but I'm just in response to what you're saying. When you wanna watch someone, they, it's because they, they know how to charm you. They know how to like artificially replicate feelings of love and fear and embarrassment and pain and, 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 and make you feel those things too. And you fall in love. Like they're, they're, it, they're masters of um, making you feel, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what makes them want, you know, it's, it's, you fall. In, so uh, I don't know how to say it. It's like, um, we just want to be liked. <laughs> whether we want to say that or not, whether that's a popular opinion or not. I'm never thinking, oh, I need to be likable or I need the audience to want to like me or watch me. Mm -hmm. But it's deep in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very deep in there, like yeah. with, and you just have a, I don't know. I'm, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, if I'm articulating it well enough. But no, I'm, I am, ne I'm never intentionally trying to make the audience like me, and I don't think that that's the case. And I think that there are times that you watch me, and, and it's not at all. I'm, I, if certainly not. But I know actors that are like that. Like I, I feel that way about. Charlize Theron, I can't not like her. I cannot fucking not like her. I Even Monster. I, you can't not like her. <laughs> uh, there is no way in hell I'll ever not like Emma Stone. I will never not... Emma Stone I will always like. Um, uh, who else you is like You can't imagine a character she's Jennifer playing. Jennifer Lawrence. I can't not... I cannot... I can't, I, she could play a, a, the worst of the worst, a serial killer, and I would still... Like her. Yeah, why is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because they I know mean, how to, they, they are. But you see, you named all women. Can you say that same thing about a man? Can you find the man that you can say that, that you that you can't say that about? Oh, yeah. If he, I, there's t tons of men. You could be like, wow, yeah, I could definitely not like, right? 
blank can play right, this. Right, because you, know? you fall in love with the women because yeah. that's what they, they're forced to do. And with the guys, you don't have to fall. You're like, oh, yeah. they, it's like a different sort of um, formula for sure. Here's what I do think about. And I think about it too much. Is relatability, not likability. Mm. Okay, so how do you think about that? How is somebody going to watch this and feel like they see something in the, yeah. in this character that they also see in themselves? That's what keeps people watching. Yes. Yes. What was that scene? It was like the beginning. I think it was the first scene. This is so weird that I'm thinking of this. I've never thought of this. Was it the first in the first episode of Homeland when Claire Danes? gets home from a crazy day and she goes to the bathroom and she gets a towel and she like cleans her mm. her, 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 her her late her private her, parts private parts yeah with it and i i watched the entire first season because <laughs> of that one moment because it it was so like oh of course you're tired like oh this is the way like i want to feel it's like a really um, specific, right. relatable yeah. fucking choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those tiny little details, and I think about them all the time because that's what keeps people engaged. Yes. That's what makes you go, oh, I, I, yes. I'm going to keep... That's, yes. yeah. and there, there I'm are, going all over the place. No, 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 there are so many examples of that that for me are like my favorite parts of movies. If I told you them, some of these, you'd be like, that's the smallest most insignificant thing but that grounded me to that person it grounded me to the reality i related yes. to it uh and it was such a small choice that they could have easily thrown away and and they would have lost me like you know like you're saying you may not have watched the whole season i you know and that's so it was interesting so brilliant why did you say that though why did we talk about I that i don't know what we're talking about like oh, you were saying people. we were touching. We were touching on the something about men and women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were saying and I was like saying relatability. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. And I felt like that was a relatable thing to do yeah, that Claire yeah, Danes did. Yeah, yes. And I felt fe I'm constantly okay, but, but, thinking about re genuinely. I am not giving a fuck about what if people like me or not. Yeah. I am giving a massive fuck about if people feel like this is a real human being and it's relatable. Yes. Even if it's as cartoonish and outlandish and insane as Madison and Zombieland, mm -hmm. I am thinking, how can they relate to this person? Always. There's a scene in it that I, I improv about. Oop, like, there's tons of stuff in there that makes me feel like, oh, you, you know this person. What about when something is proposed that's not relatable? Like, are you fighting against that? Or what about something that you can't wrap your arms around in the script that you think, wow, I'm going to lose people here? Are you fighting against that? Are you talking to the writer? Like, hello, this is not this. I'm gonna we're gonna lose people here. Of course, you're having but that also discussion. Also, you pick your battles. Yeah, you know, you, you and you also respect when some respect people's boundaries. If they're like, no, this has to be here, then you go okay. Yeah. But there are tons of times where I'm like, I don't, and you make it work. You always make it work, and sometimes you're super wrong. I've been super wrong before. Yeah. Super, 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 super wrong. Yeah. I mean, a lot. <laughs> Especially because sometimes when you're in it, I say sometimes I feel like shooting or preparing for a part or playing a part. It's like reading a book this close. Mm. The words are so blurry. It's, the book is an inch away. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a centimeter away from your face and you can't actually read the words. Mm -hmm. it's so, you have no, pers no perspective. Mm -hmm. None. We'll be right back after this. I have to tell you that when we first started talking about doing ads for this podcast, I was very reluctant. I myself do not want to be peddling anybody's product that I wouldn't want, or need, or like. So you can imagine my delight to be talking to you about Committed Impulse, which is a class taught by Josh Pice. When Josh was on the show a couple episodes ago and started talking to me about Committed Impulse, I became very angry because a couple months before that, a young actor had come to me asking for advice on an acting class. I gave him some options, but I wish I knew about Josh's class then, because this class would be perfect for this young actor. It's actually perfect for anyone, not just actors, entrepreneurs, public speakers, anybody who wants to remain in the moment, no matter what the situation is. What I really like about what Josh teaches is that you're not negating anything 
that's going on within you. You're using it and being creatively unstoppable. What really excites me too is that Josh treats this thing like a lab. He takes information that he gathers from other acting jobs, other great actors, and puts it back into the class. I want to be a part of it. If you do, all you got to do is go to committedimpulse.com slash back to one. Enter the code back to one and you get $25 off any upcoming classes. Again, that's committedimpulse.com slash back to one. Enter the code back to one. Last time you were talking about the importance of auditioning because you were talking about how you might like a part, you might relate to it, but you don't know if you're right for it until you audition. I still feel that way. And is it weird that you didn't audition for this? I made, I did a table read. Wow. Before we cast anybody, we did a table read to hear it out loud. I asked my mom to play my mom because I, I just, we yeah. pulled together people we knew Yeah. because I wanted to make sure. And that was and your I process did, of kind of finding that's, that. Because I had heard of that, of like, I think it was Cameron Diaz or something like that, who had used to do that, who used to, when she, because she was always getting offers, she would go to a table read before she would accept the offer. Because he, how do you know if you're right for something unless yeah. you get it on, you put it on its feet, you know what I mean? Yeah. You really yeah. say, you, yeah. you do the damn thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we did it before there was any discussion of financing. We did a table read. Yeah. See, that's interesting because, you know, I'm imagining just other people would just be like, that's not necessary. You know, I like, I, I love it. My, my love for it will, will make it right for me or make me right for it or something like that. But the idea of like trying to be objective and be like, I think there are parts that'll come across that I will, there'll be things that I produce that I know that I can yeah. knock out of the, there'll be things that I know. And it doesn't mean that it's easy or that I'm taking in, uh, the, 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 you know, safe route. Um, but this was not one of the, this is yeah. a very um, particular character. Um, yeah. I don't think that's always necessary to do what I did, but I thought it was for this. Yeah, yeah. But I still, I love auditioning. I mean, even, um, I had the worst audition of my life four months ago. And in front of just people, I really didn't want to fuck up in front of. Mm -hmm. And then I had to audition for them all again last week. And it was just, it was so nervous. And it was a big audition. And it was a lot of material and songs and this and that. Mm -hmm. And it was a great audition. Mm -hmm. And I was so proud of myself that it, I was able to reestablish my yeah. relationship with these people. And I walked away and I was like, damn, I never feel this good about auditions. I never feel like I'm really that right for a part. Like, I think I'm going to get it. Hmm. <laughs> and then two days later, I got a call that was like, yeah, I went to the other girl hmm. and I was wrecked. And I was trying to access why I was so wrecked. I was like, is it because... I was so happy. My ego was so happy that I had reestablished the like that that these people that I had embarrassed myself in front of, I thought liked me, and now they don't like. Like, what is it? And then I was like, Do, is it just because I care so much about them? And I was like, oh, what? And then I had to stop and be like, what a joy it is that I cared this much about something that I'm this upset about it. That means I'm going to care this much again. Yeah. And next, like, but it it, it is a it's a it's a conversation you have to have to translate things instead of like resentment, oh. anger, pain. You got to like feel it, yeah. mourn it. And then you got to go like, what a, now how can I think about this? But yeah. I still love auditioning, <laughs> even though I'm in a, in a, even though there's a little hiccup, you get no all the time, but there are ones that really, really hurt. And I think it's interesting sure. what you said there, because it's like, you, you have to translate I think you use the word translate your feelings like otherwise if you let them sink down without processing them they'll 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 eat at other things yeah you know and if you just like bring them up identify them then you you know you can still feel the hurt still feel the pain but it's not going to you know infect other areas totally do you know brit marling yeah i mean not personally but yeah did you read oh, that piece yeah I don't want to be the strong female lead. I haven't read it. Okay. Let me sum it up real quick. Because I want to talk to you about it. Huh? My mom emailed it to me. She yeah. did, yeah. I want to have a conversation with your mom too about this. <laughs> uh, basically, 
centuries of narrative precedent written by men to mythologize men. Its pattern is inciting incident, rising tension, explosive climax, and denouement. And she was talking about how this is basically the same path of a, a male, um, what's a better word than orgasm? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's the male um, journey to explosion. And she was like, how do I bring characters into being that don't satisfy this male desire and this male journey? Hmm. And well, I find this so fascinating. That's wild. Yeah. She's so smart. <laughs> it's like... She's I, on another level. But I want to know if you have any ideas of ways of telling stories that do not fit in with this thing. Like, like for instance, like I feel like Wonder Woman and, and stuff like this where it's violent and strong women. Like This is what she's talking about. Like That's, that's, that's fitting this female thing into a male um, um, narrative. But what is the alternative? Like, what is the female narrative then that isn't um, um, infected by this, by this male desire narrative? Shoot. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I can't speak for the, the entire human race. I, I mean, like, I read, what, Sapiens, and now I think I can comment on how to change... That idea is so fascinating and I'm wrapping my head around it slowly and I want, I'm very excited to read her, her piece. But things like Wonder Woman, though influenced by the male gaze, mm -hmm. immeasurable to know how much of an effect it has yeah. on young girls everywhere. Immeasurable. Yeah. And a, a massive, massive uh, win for, for for us as, as, a, as a gender. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to then, for me to process that it, that falls into the category of it still being. And she, that's not her words. No, I know, I know, I know it's not, no, 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 I know it's not her words. I was just commenting on, yeah. on. But I know what you mean. I, I hear what you're saying there. I hear I what you're saying there. It's so exciting to live right now. I yeah. know it, we talk a lot about how scary it is. Yeah and how dark it is, but it's also so exciting. Yeah. We're looking at the world in a totally different way than we yes. ever have. Yes. I mean, I guess you could say that about any other time too. They were like, it's always different, but. No, but this is a real change. I, I feel the change. People are inspired and yeah. angry and, and, um, and talking about how inspired and angry they are. Mm -hmm. And, um, I feel lucky to be an actress right now. I feel really lucky to be an actress right now. Mm -hmm. I feel really inspired and sometimes angry. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes it's good to, I think, to st step back and remind ourselves of that, that it's good, that we're, we're in, a, yes. in a really interesting time. When you said before, you're ready for some stillness, does that mean you're closing a script on page nine because you don't see the stillness. You, you know, this one's not gonna have the stillness. Let me pick up the next one in the no, file. No, 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 I no, no. No, because literally, as I say, I've been saying it for, I, I keep saying, I'm like, I really want stillness. And then at the same time, they go, what do you What do you wanna do? And I go, well, I'd love to play, um, uh, I'd love to do a musical, and I'd love, love to do Spider Woman, and I'd love to play Snow White. And everyone's like, "Those are literally you just did a musical, an action movie, and a princess movie. You're you literally just said the three least still things. You thought, like, like that that you don't you don't know what you want at all. And yeah. I'm like, no, I do. I want it all. Yeah, I want it all. I want all the things, and 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 I'll do all the things. But I think. I think I just say I want stillness because I think it would behoove me to go back to challenging myself in that regard, ha the quiet confidence. Like working with Jessica Lang was so, I mean, of course she was playing this, she played my grandmother in The Politician and she was one of my favorite actresses of all time. Um, yeah. And 
though we were both playing insane fucking crazy people, big, larger than life crazy characters, she sat in silence and filled it with just Mm -hmm. glorious langness. And it reminded me of how, how quickly I speak in my regular life and in, and when I act as well. And what does that mean? Is it because I don't feel worthy of people's mm-hmm. time and attention? Is it because I don't think that my words carry weight? Is it is that right or fair to the writer and the character that I'm putting myself into them? Like, is that why I keep being attracted to these fast-talking, smart, quippy, witty, bright, blah, blah, blah people because I just don't want to sit in silence for two seconds? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'd be good for me as a human being. I think it'd be good for me as an actor. Um, so that's why I'm going to make an action movie, princess movie, and musical all combined in one. <laughs> but she inspired me because she she would just take time. Mm. You know, I don't do that. I don't... I mean, that comes with... You know, she's deeply talented and she has so much experience and she... and confidence, but... Um, I just liked it a lot. I liked watching that. I've heard you say in interviews lately that you're in a quarter life crisis. <laughs> I want I to tell you. I say it with you, a smile. I say it with a smile. I want to tell you that I'm sure people are saying, no, you have nothing to be in crisis about. I'm here to tell you, you do. Okay. Okay. I'm validating your crisis. Okay. Anybody who says, what do you, what do you, uh, what is there to be a crisis about? They don't know your potential. It's like it's like if you saw Einstein and he's like, I'm really struggling with this, and he's really young, and you're like, bro, you've got a nice job, you got a good job. Well, he didn't develop a relativity yet. You know what? He's got stuff to do. You don't even know what he has. You don't even know what he's going to do. How could you say, bro, chill out? The last thing you should do is chill out. Like he needs to be uh, uh, in crisis. Maybe you need to be in crisis. Okay. I wanted to tell you that. But that's I also, a very, very uh, genuinely help. That's a, I, thank you. At the same time, I want to know if you're getting what you need. Okay? Yeah, you just gave a Jew permission to be in crisis. <laughs> <laughs> you just gave it's me my what I need. For this day. Yeah, you gave me what I needed, and now I have it. Are you kidding? That was all I needed was permission to, to, to totally fucking lose it. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking, as I always do, about your inner artist now, okay? Is your inner artist getting what you need? You're talking about auditioning and these great, wonderful roles. This is great. No, because I have yet to work. I have, I really want to, I mean, I, I, I say this with, I don't say, I, I think though I've, I've been able to work with such amazing directors and people that I've, I've developed long-lasting beautiful lifelong friendships with and and had collaborations that I am so proud of it would be really neat to get an opportunity to work with um, a real seasoned pro a a veteran of sorts a veteran of filmmaking yeah Um, what actors dream is not to work with Scorsese or Spielberg or you know I have so much to learn I have so 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 much to learn Um, not is exciting yeah. yeah you know it is i'm excited i'm excited to, to learn more <laughs> yes i hope you'll keep coming back on the show because this would be a great thing to keep talking to you as you as you progress yes i love talking with you okay good and as i said at the beginning i'm sorry if my brain is a bit scattered if this was scattered then you're you're okay, really. Then maybe I'm scattered. I don't know. No, I'm really? scattered. You're not scattered. I'm scattered. You're not scattered. I'm scattered. No, you're not scattered. I'm scattered. <laughs> Zoe Deutsch, thank you. Thank you so much. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs>